A while back, I published a video about getting started with .NET Core on Linux. Things have changed quite a bit since then, so I'm releasing this update, which replaces the previous video. I've got Ubuntu 16.04 running in a Docker container. The container I am using is on Docker Hub and is linked below. I'm connecting to it through a web browser using NoVNC. The instructions for how to get NoVNC connected are in the instructions for the container on Docker Hub but I've made no modifications to the Docker file for the container. The first thing I need to do is install some prerequisite packages. So first, I'll open up a terminal emulator. Then, I'll update the packages. And then, install two packages. The first, apt transport https, will allow apt to use HTTPS repositories. The second, xdgutils, will set the default web browser to Firefox, and we'll see more about this later on. Now to actually install the .NET Core SDK and tooling. I'm going to open up Firefox, and then I'll navigate to .NET. This is the home page for all things .NET. I'll click on Download, and then on .NET Core. I'll scroll down to the bottom of the page and click on the step-by-step -step instructions for Linux. I'm using Ubuntu, so I'll select that, and then I'll use the instructions for version 16.04. The first two commands I'll copy and paste into the terminal. Now I need to update the packages to add the .NET Core repository. Notice that the endpoint uses HTTPS, which is why we installed apt transport HTTPS at the beginning. And finally, to install .NET Core itself, at this point, the SDK and tooling are ready to use. I'll verify this by running the .NET command which is how we will access the command line tooling. The .NET command has a number of subcommands, much like git does. To see those, I'll use the dash "-h", option. We'll be using a few of these, but for right now, the important one is new. This will generate the skeleton for a specific type of .NET project, such as console or web. Again, I'll use the dash "-h", option to learn more. This will first populate the local NuGet package cache. NuGet is the .NET package manager. This only happens once and will only take a minute. After it's complete, we can see the templates available for different project types. Let's start with a console application. First, I'll create a directory to hold my .NET Core apps. Then I'll create the application. The dash "-o", option will create a directory demo app for the project. This project is incredibly simple. The csproj file stores metadata about the project, including the NuGet dependencies. I'll have more to say about that later on. The program.cs file is the source itself. Let's take a look. First I'm going to need a text editor. For simple files like this, I'll use nano, which I need to install. This is merely a main method that prints hello world to the console but it's a start. Now the dependencies need to be restored. For that, there is the .NET restore command. And with the packages restored, the project can be built. And finally, the application can be run. The app, predictably, displays the familiar hello world message. That's great, but what about something a little more complex? And do we have to use the command line for everything? Microsoft has thought ahead. Visual Studio Code is a lightweight text editor that is inspired by Visual Studio. It's free, cross-platform, and open source. And it's not even a .NET app. It's written in a superset of JavaScript called TypeScript running on top of the Electron shell from GitHub. It supports many common features such as IntelliSense and syntax highlighting, as well as support for Git and debugging .NET Core applications with extensions. I'll download the release for Ubuntu. To install it, I'll use the dpkg tool. 
This command will fail because there are some unresolved dependencies. To resolve them and finish setting up the app, I'll run this command. Now that Visual Studio Code is installed, I can run it with the code command. However, there is one th other thing that needs to be done, and it's specific to this Docker container. The user in the container is running as root. This is considered to be dangerous in a production setting, so Visual Studio Code takes steps to make it painful in an attempt to encourage you not to do it. Actually, these are safeguards which are justified, but for demo purposes, we can safely ignore them. In the interest of expediency, I'll run code with this option to specify a data directory to use. When VS Code opens, it will show a warning about running as root, which again, for the purposes of this demo, can be safely dismissed. Visual Studio Code supports a number of extensions. I'm going to install one that will make life as a .NET Core developer much easier. First, I'll click on the Extensions tab. This will show the most popular extensions. The one I want is C-Sharp. I'll click Install and then click Reload to complete the installation. Next, I'm going to create a web application using the .NET command. Visual Studio Code has an integrated terminal, so we don't have to switch back and forth between windows. The terminal is found in the View menu, or by pressing Control Tick. I'll go to my .NET apps directory. Then I'll run the .NET new command again, this time specifying web as the template. Now I'll open this in Visual Studio Code in the Explorer panel. This project has a few more items than the previous one. But first, I need to initialize the tooling for the C-Sharp extension installed earlier. To do that, just open up a C-Sharp file. The first time a C-Sharp file is opened, Visual Studio Code will download and install the tooling for the extension, including the .NET Core debugger. After that, it will ask to install some metadata to the project to support debugging inside of Visual Studio Code. It also recognizes that the dependencies in the csproj file need to be restored and prompts for that so we don't have to run the command manually. And once the dependencies are restored, the red error line should disappear. Now I can run the application from Visual Studio Code in the Debug panel. At the top, there is this drop-down to set the type of application to run. I'll leave it on Web. Then I'll click the Run button. Visual Studio Code will start the build process and then run the application on a local web server using port 5000 as the default. It will also open the default web browser and navigate to the root. And the result is Hello World. The message is generated here, in this line of code. However, we usually don't generate web content like this. Instead, it's more common to store the content in markup files and then load those. A simple way to do this in ASP.NET Core is with the static files middleware. So I'll add that by calling the use static files method on the app object. IntelliSense is telling me that the method is not found, and that's because we need to add a dependency to the application first. So I'll remove the offending code, and then open the csproj file. Notice this item group with the package reference for Microsoft.ASP.NET Core. I need to add Microsoft ASP.NET Core static files. And while I could do this manually, it's safer and easier to use the command line in the integrated terminal for that. This will add the package to the csproj file. Visual Studio Code will see the change in the dependencies and prompt for a .NET restore. And with that, I can return to the startup.cs file and add the middleware method. This time IntelliSense knew what we needed. Now I just need to add an HTML page. In the Explorer panel, 
I'll add an HTML file to the www root folder. And now I'll create some simple content. Notice that Visual Studio Code helps me create HTML elements too. Now I can save everything and run the application from the debug panel. I can navigate to index.html and see the results. One more thing I want to touch on, and that is debugging. I'll modify startup.cs to put the welcome message in a separate variable. Now I'm going to set a breakpoint after the line where the string is created. And I'll run the application again. This time, the breakpoint stops the application and Visual Studio Code is shown. From here, I can inspect the value of the string, and I can also look into the details of the request. And I could step through the code, continue, and other common debug tasks. However, this should be a decent introduction to .NET Core development with the new tooling. Obviously, there is much more that can be done, but I'll save it for future installments. The main takeaway here is that this is for real. You can do it today. And also, it's cross-platform. Actually, once you get through with the installations, if you're using Visual Studio Code, the developer experience across Windows, Mac OS, and Linux is virtually indistinguishable. And that's pretty impressive and Microsoft is making improvements all the time to further the project. If you enjoyed this video, and it was useful, please give it a like or share it on Twitter. And I'm always open to feedback, so feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.